BlackRock literally just confirmed what's coming. And guys, I am very excited about this next big move. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber and make sure that you are following me on all socials down in the description below to never miss a future update and join the free discord to absolutely dominate this crypto cycle. And with that in mind, let's dive on in and let's go back to April where we saw a post by Ripple regarding Mika and the European Digital Asset Regulation. And guess what? When we really look at this, the end goal is for these regulatory frameworks to be the key that unlocks institutional adoption. Why? Because guess what? Institutions are all the big money. You want $10 trillion flowing into this space? Institutions are your answer. But we need to unlock this space. We need a key that unlocks all of the big money players to finally tap in, go live. And a lot of them are already planning and preparing for regulations, which means they already have use cases teed up. They already are ready for once we get that green light. That's why a lot of people that are sitting on the sidelines saying like, oh, just wait and wait and wait. For an example, with regulations, they think that, all right, well, this space still needs to be regulated. All right, and then once we have regulations, they need to build out these solid use cases. No, that's where the big misconception comes into place. These institutions are already aligned with regulations. They're already planning. They're already building. They're already you know, here with live use cases and all they are waiting for is that green light. So once we get that, it's essentially game over. Now, if we focus on institutional adoption, okay, what if I told you about the flip the switch event? That's right. This was a narrative that was floating around for a while, and a lot of people said there's no way that that's real. Um, it became basically a joke around the XRP community as well. But what if I told you that it's actually confirmed? We're going to get to that here in a second, but over here we have Empire Newsletter, Crypto's Next Wave of Smart Money. 55%. That's how many surveyed institutional investors plan to up their crypto allocations in the next two to three years alone. We may look back on 2023 as the year digital assets firmly plant at roots in the challenging soil of traditional finance. And what's crazy about this is XRP is in the top four around what types of cryptocurrencies these firms are allocating towards. And beyond this, we also have down here that to date, while 62% of investors have allocated greater than 1% of their assets to crypto, the survey shows that percentage increasing to 81% two to three years out. So institutions are going to continue to funnel in. And this was over 270 institutional investors. Now, if we go down here, we have, I think the fun space is quite interesting one to watch as well, where we've seen some successful launches with the money market funds and treasuries, aka we're looking to tokenize. We're looking to tokenize a lot more. And here we could actually see what features that are really kind of focused on. One, connectivity to liquidity providers, prime brokerage services, lending and borrowing against crypto, which by the way, that's coming to the XRP ledger and support for stablecoins as well. But a lot of what we are seeing here in terms of those features, Ripple is trying to offer and the XRP ledger is also about to get that lending and borrowing um, amendment, which is a big one. But building on top of this, we also have institutional crypto adoption takes a leap with Ethereum ETFs. Remember what's next after the ETFs. Over here, we have when we think about the digital asset space, we're thinking about it across crypto, stablecoins and tokenization. We launched a tokenized fund earlier this year. Now it's the largest tokenized fund in the world. And this is from BlackRock. Now, no, this is not the confirmation. This isn't the news that I'm talking about. No, we have something much more interesting to really kind of focus on. But if we take a quick look at some of the headline articles in just the last week or so, just take a look at this. Seven countries testing tokenization. 
Goldman Sachs to launch three tokenization projects this year. BlackRock launches digital asset fund backed by $100 million on Ethereum. Tokenization market landscape of tokenized government securities by, bla uh, by uh, blockchain. Look at this. This is just up only in just the last year alone. And this will only go like this is only going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. I'm very excited for the first trillion because that's when everything changes. That's when the entire dynamic around tokenization and around crypto changes. But over here we have Larry Fink, BlackRock loud and clear. The next generation of markets will be tokenization of securities. ETFs are just a stepping stone. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be the changing the whole way we invest or will be changing the, the whole way uh, we invest. Check this out. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Now, building on top of that, we also have Larry Fink, BlackRock. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. That means every stock, every bond will have its own, basically. and. Um, It'll be one general ledger. Early investor will have our own number, our own identification. The most important thing, we could customize strategies through tokenization that fits every individual. Check it out. Beginnings of, um, of a ETF Bitcoin. We believe ETFs are a technology no different than Bitcoin was a technology for, for asset storage. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we can customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, if, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they can vote their own shares. Is this the end of mutual funds? I think, well, a lot of people, it's, it's just a, it's a wrapper. It's not the end of it, but I would say the dominant form of bringing products going forward will be in the form of, of ETFs. Now, as we really address this, right, I bring these back up because if we're really talking about institutional adoption and regulations leading to it, guess what? In almost an instant, we will have so much money flowing on chain. That's not me selling you nonsense. That's not me selling you a used car or anything. Like, no, these institutions are already teed up. They're already ready. Why do you think all these institutions dating back to like 2015, 2016, 2017 are now going big on tokenization use cases and pushing, you know, these uh, possibilities? It's because they're already prepared. They're, they've been around this space for almost 10 years now or even more. They are ready. And institutional interest in DeFi itself is rising. BlackRock ventures into asset tokenization with a 100 million USDC fund on Ethereum. This was big news, but the focus here was institutional DeFi. Okay, institutional DeFi is the big thing. Now, just recently, July 26th, BlackRock says the big money hasn't arrived yet. They haven't turned it on yet. 
they are expediting the process. This was confirmation at Nashville, the Bitcoin conference, just recently. And this is confirmation that, guess what? All of these tokenization endeavors from BlackRock that we've you know, witnessed, and even the ETFs, that's not even the big money. That's a small little piece. That's a drop of water in the bucket versus what we are expected to see in this space through these institutions. Check this out. As I said yesterday, one of the biggest ETF launches in history, if not, if not the one. And what's interesting to me is how big um, the assets in Bitcoin ETFs are now relative to the ecosystem, right? It's coming up on 60 billion relative to a one and a half trillion dollar asset, let's call the ballpark. There's only um, double that amount in gold bullion ETFs. And gold bullion is worth about 15 trillion in market cap, so set 10 times as big. So the impact is starting to become a little bit of a, a you know a whale in the eco, a Bitcoin ecosystem. Rob, do you is, is it a passing fad? What do you guys think is going on over at Blackman? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think what's interesting, uh, James, is that we're still pretty early in the rollout of these, right? It's only been six months. Yes, the the flows have been tremendous, but when you think about the client segments iShares is similar for, for Van Eck and, and Bitwise that we serve, it really breaks down into end investors, direct, uh, wealth advisory, and institutional. And that first segment from day one came kind of storming out of the gates. They, there was huge demand and, and that drove uh, a lot of the flows. But in the other two segments, it's still quite early in their journey. When we talk about institutions, there's a long research, diligence, exploration process that requires a lot of education. We're on that journey with a lot of our institutional clients today. The wealth advisory space, the RIA channel, which is a subset of it, turned these on quickly. But when you think about the big wirehouses and private bank platforms, none of them have really opened them up to their advisors yet. Typically that takes multiple years and they're actually, in many cases, expediting those processes in light of what tremendous success there's been, but none of them have actually turned it on yet. Yeah, so there's those three levels. There's like fully restricted, you can only, then the next level is like basically you can only buy it. So you guys have it. Now this would be the flip of the switch on BlackRock side. What about this entire space? Big shout out to Smoke Dog for this. Yes, we are about to experience the great switch. The switch is not just a crypto Twitter theory. It's a real concept that is used in institutional documentation to describe the transition to a blockchain-based financial system, a transition that the largest corporations and governments are about to undertake. Yes, the switch is about to be flipped. And here we have the great switch. Major companies are ready for blockchain, but can banks deliver? And building on top of this, yes, Systemically important banks like JP Morgan, HSBC, Franklin Templeton are flipping the switch around blockchain based systems in 2024. Clear? And here we have Wall Street's new blockchain apps face real world test. And check this out cryptocurrency firms may still be licking their wounds, but a slew of major financial companies, including JP Morgan Chase and Co., HSBC Holdings, um, and Franklin Templeton, are flipping the switch on new systems built around blockchain, marking an acceleration into 2024. This is not a joke, okay? The, the joke was flip the switch event, XRP to 100, 500, $1,000. Like that's nonsense. The real flip the switch here is having the big money pouring in, having these blockchain-based use cases going live. And will we have to re wait for regulations? Well, regulations are starting to flow into real time now. Mika was a big deal. Everything else going forward will align with Mika. We are about to see institutionalization in this space on a legitimate large scale stage. And this is all going to be focused on the new financial system based within blockchain and tokenization. Tokenization of every single dollar amount thing out there that you could possibly think about. We're talking about derivatives. We're talking about debt markets, equities markets. Everything that you could possibly think about that has a dollar figure amount to it, or even if it doesn't, right? Remember, anything can be tokenized on chain. It's going to happen. And this is where the floodgates truly open and we see the largest players moving in. 
remember what we are actually witnessing here when it comes to BlackRock. Like, you know what's crazy to me? We have BlackRock literally telling you like, hey, tokenization of markets is next. We have BlackRock, the largest asset management company out there now in the space, literally telling you the plan, yet people are trying to, you know, get out of the space as fast as possible and get away from crypto. They're too blindsided by the short side of things. Look at the long term side of things. Guys, what's going to happen to the space over the next couple of years? I can tell you right now, it's going to grow significantly. Never leave the space. Take your profits, but never leave the space because this is where the future financial markets will be. This is where the future of the you know, financial system will be as well through specific projects in this space. And in my opinion, XRP is one of them. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys did definitely have a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.